everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Chrysler 3.2 and 3.6 liter Pentastar engines again. Now this time we're going to be talking about something that I've come across that I've never seen before. And it's something Chrysler actually put a star case, which is one of their little, not a bulletin, but it's kind of a note to put out there to look for if you ever come across this. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Something that could cause a camshaft position sensor code either an intermittent code or circuit code. And that's what we're going to be talking about and how it doesn't have to be electrical, could be mechanical. Now, from time to time, you can get some cam sensor codes on these engines. Now, there are two cam sensors, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. And each sensor monitors both the exhaust and the intake cam, which means each sensor is really two sensors. So, from time to time, you can get an electrical code or circuit code, which most of the time we assume has something to do with the sensor, the wiring, engine controller. But what if it wasn't electrical? What if it was mechanical? What if this sensor reading is kind of erratic, kind of borderline, something that may appear to be like an open circuit momentarily? You know, a fluctuation. Well, that's what we're talking about today. Now there's a total of eight different codes that could be related to this issue that I'm going to be talking about today. Now four of those are circuit codes related to the camshaft position sensors and the other four are actually intermittent signal codes. Now when you look at the codes they can get kind of confusing because we designate our camshafts like we do our O2 sensors if you're familiar with that. We've got a bank side which is the first number then we got a slash and the second one's going to tell us the position. For example B0340, which is the one we're dealing with on the other vehicle that I'm going to be showing you today. 340 means one of one. So when that comes to camshafts, that's bank one, where number one is, right? That's the passenger side head. And it's going to be the number one position, which is exhaust. So one of one is the exhaust here. So do your homework. Now, I'm not going to give you specifics as far as break down every single one of those eight codes. I'll give you the numbers down below. So if you see a 340 or one of the other codes, this is something to take into consideration. Now, before we go talking about what you need to pay attention to when it comes to camshaft related codes, I want to give you a little backstory on this vehicle. The history is kind of important because we want to know when we might see issues like this. Is it on something new or something old? This case is a 2015, so she is eight years old. She's got over 200,000 miles. Now, as far as the service history, Around 3,000 miles ago, it came in and the customer wanted to address the tapping noise, which if you know anything about a 3.2 or 3.6 Pentastar, that's somewhat of a common issue you'll see from time to time, and it has to do with the rollers and the needle bearings on the roller rockers. Now, during teardown, we found numerous rockers had failed. The rollers had seized and they had chewed up all four camshafts, so it got four total, which is not a common item. At that point, reinstalled it, cold boots, spark plugs, PCV valve, gave it back to the customer, everything was fine. About 2,000 miles into it, started getting a check engine light for a code related to the camshaft on the driver's side exhaust. Brought the vehicle in, did a basic inspection, seeing it had the notorious oil leak underneath, oil filter housings pouring oil out the back, check, we don't have any oil on the stick. At that point, once you drain it and check it, you're probably about three quarts low. So we don't know what effect that had on the system, but we know it was a problem. So at that point, just to make sure everything was fine, tore it down, put an exhaust cam, shaft phaser, and oil control valve in. Everything drove fine, gave it back to the customer. A thousand miles later, we're now getting a code P0340. It has to do with the passenger side exhaust cam. This time, it's a circuit code. Now, just because it's a circuit code doesn't mean that it's electrical. And that's what I'm going to show you today. We're going to show you something that Chrysler pointed out in a service bulletin back in 2016. So a year after this was made, something to pay attention to. I've never seen this issue before until now. So again, you're learning something new just about every day when you're working on this vehicle. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it. So let me show you what that was. So as you can see, I went ahead and removed the battery tray slash box assembly. It takes up a lot of valuable real estate and kind of gives us a lot more room to get to that valve cover. And if you look at the two camshafts, they're nice and shiny. Again, they only got 3,000 miles on it. The chain, the guides, the phasers, the oil control valves, those have 200,000 miles on it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking this camshaft. This is the exhaust one that set the code P0340. 
we're going to see if it moves independently of the cam phaser. If it does, then we know the pin or the mechanism inside is not locked. It should be, especially sitting here at this position. Now Chrysler wants you to grab right here. First, look at the four holes. You remember, if you've watched my video on the rock arm assembly, these four need to be up. That's when you got it in the correct position. They want you to grab it right here. There's actually a portion of the camshaft where you can put a crescent wrench on or a wrench. And we're going to actually move it. Pay attention to the cam phaser and the camshaft. See that independent movement? You can actually see the old control valve move, but the phaser not. We've got a failed phaser here, and that's setting the code. Now, it doesn't make the rattle on every startup. And if you're a Ford guy, you know what that rattle means. Cam phasers right off the bat. It's not very common on a 3.2 or 3.6 Pentastar. Now, I showed you how to check it with the wrench. I'm going to give you a little more closer view of it. And instead, we're going to be using the 36 millimeter socket on the oil control valve. Again, watch your phaser, watch your chain, watch your camshaft. You can actually feel the springiness on the socket and the ratchet as you're going to the left it kind of springs back to the right and as you can see the lock pin isn't engaged and we've got movement so there's a couple of different ways you can check it both with the wrench right here or you can use your 36 millimeter socket and breaker bar so we know we've got a bad cam phaser so the next thing i want to do is i want to take one of these apart and i'm going to show you what's going on with that lock pin and we're going to talk about what happened on the failed one now, if you look real close, we got some distinguishing differences. We've got EHX. That right there means exhaust cam phaser and INT intake, right? Flip them over. They look real similar except the back sides. You see the spring on the exhaust. Intake doesn't have a spring. Now, when I describe the cam phaser, I'm going to talk about it in two different ways, an inner portion and outer portion. The inner portion is completely separate from the outer. The inner as you can see is a little raised so it sticks up above the phaser and it comes out the back side and has this alignment pin that's the same alignment pin you're going to use for lining it up to the camshaft and also on the front you got your old control valve going through and that's what sits on that raised lip that goes through and fastens the phaser to the camshaft that makes contact with the inner not the outer body now the outer body has different components here we've got a plate we got a series of five different torque screws, a middle body, and then the gear assembly. If I take this apart, we'll see what's going on inside. And you'd be kind of surprised that there's not a lot in there. Mainly, it's the locking pin. Okay, lift up. If you look real close, you see this piece of plastic. On the opposite side, that plastic is the spring and the lock pin. Now, the reason why there's a plastic piece there is because this inner portion rotates independently of the outer. So technically, in theory, you would see this going on. And we don't want to rub the spring down, so we put a piece of plastic so it can rub the back of this plate and be fine. Now I want to try to keep everything as far as the center part lined up with the back side so I can explain things. So if you look right here, I'm going to lift up so I can rotate this thing. The inner portion can rotate separate from the outer portion. That's what we noticed on the vehicle, right? That's what was going on. That's that half an inch of play. Now we do this by applying oil and oil pressure to different passages. One, we got to release the lock pin. And the second, we fill up these voids. And by doing that, we can actually advance and retard the timing on that individual camshaft. Now, let me go ahead and pull the outer body off and that piece of plastic. Get you a little closer view of that lock pin and what's going on. So we've got a spring right here. And I'll take it out so we can see everything. We've got the spring. And we've got the lock pin. Lock pin's hollow on one side because it's got the recess for the spring. Sit this back on here. And it's got a board that it sits in. And by that board, if you look down in there, you'll see a hole. That's where that lock pin is actually going to engage. I'm going to rotate it. And it's going to lock in right there. So, at this point, it's locked. Now, it's under spring tension. It's always going to be locked unless something overrides it. Number one, oil goes in that little side passage right there. And when it does, it pushes out on the lock pin. That's how we initially get it to move. Now, something else could prevent it from finally seating back in that bore. Couple things, piece of debris gets down into the bore there, or piece of debris gets down in the cylinder here, or the bore on the body, 
that that lock pin slides in and out. So it actually could get locked down in there or something again gets into that recessed area of the gear allowing it to not fully seat. Because I can actually just put some tension on the back here with my finger, rotate it, and she's locked. So on the vehicle we had, we actually found a piece of debris in the bore. Once I took it out, I could actually see something down in there. So at that point, it's a matter of removing and replacing. So that's how it works. We add oil pressure to this side right here, that little side cutout. It goes to the front side, and that actually pushes the lock pin off and allows the operation of the cam phaser. But again, it's, it's supposed to be locked. It stays locked until we command it to. So being that it's not, that means something is preventing that pin from sitting in that hole. So now you know. So what does it cost for the parts? Now, when you're going in there and you're replacing either camshafts with the rockers and lifters, yes, in a perfect world, we could replace all the cam phasers and the oil control valves. But remember, these things aren't cheap. Each one of these phasers is about 100 bucks and the control valve is 100 bucks. So that's $400 per side for a total of 800 on top of the repair already. Yes, in a perfect world, like I said, we'd replace these two. But just based off of experience, I haven't really seen a reason to do that at this point now. Eventually, if I start seeing some patterns developing on cars of some high mileage, maybe I'll make note of that. Maybe I give the warning to the customer an option. Again, they're about $100 a pop for each one of these items. I'm going to go ahead and replace this one. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and replace that one, intake and exhaust. And I'm putting two oil control valves on just to be safe. Again, I've been in this multiple times for different issues. I want to kind of nip it in the bud, and then we'll see what happens. At that point, three of them have been replaced because I did the exhaust side on the driver's side. So now we'll just go ahead and get that knocked out. Now while making this video, I started thinking, is there an easy way to check the camshafts without removing the valve cover? For a moment, I thought there was, but for those of you thinking the same thing, I want to show you why you can't. Now in theory, you would think you could just remove the solenoid. Behind the solenoid is that oil control valve. Well, in theory, you could probably put a socket on it extension to see if it would move and it would spring back you would know right you're not loosening it enough and you're not tightening enough you should feel some play but there's a problem with that so any of you thinking that you can do this i'm going to show you why you can't now the solenoid removed you look up in here you can see the oil control valve it's visible in a perfect world we'd be able to grab our socket our ratchet insert it in here and try to rotate it and see if it was springing back and forth Unfortunately, that 36 millimeter socket is larger than this hole and will not go in there. So yes, that would have been ideal. That would have been perfect, right? Instead of taking a battery box out, taking valve covers off, we could have taken the solenoids off. That's the first thing that came to mind with me. Unfortunately, for those trying, this is a thin wall socket for the most part. But the problem you got to run into is, again, just too big to fit the hole. So you're not going to be able to do that for those that were thinking about it. Now, I've been working on these engines since they came out in 2011, so that's going on 12 years now. And that is the first cam phaser I've ever seen fail like that. Now, based off of the numbers of what I've repaired versus that, I'm going to kind of put that in the rare category. But again, it's something to keep in mind in case you run across this problem and you're not throwing a bunch of parts at it and spending a lot of time and money and not addressing the issue. Again, it's something to store in your little memory toolbox and pull out from time to time if you have to. Something to double check. Now, I'm still of the mindset that I'm not going to replace cam phasers and oil control valves on these unless I have a problem because they don't fail that consistently. Yes, we've got some high miles. I could, if I start seeing a pattern where I see more of these fail, great. If I'm going in there with 200,000 miles, some places they go ahead and replace the engine. Me, they hold up well enough to where I can do your rock arms, I can do your camshaft. Maybe at some point I may start recommending all four oil control valves and phasers. Again, that's another $800 plus. Right now, I'm not feeling it. We'll see how things go. Now, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video, leave something in the comments below. Also, if you shop on Amazon, which everybody does, if you scroll down, at the beginning of that description, there's going to be a link. Click on that link. Make that your Amazon homepage. And anytime you buy anything, it doesn't even have to pertain to what we're doing in this video. Anything you buy, you will be helping to support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching.